This is a story that came out in my San Antonio, July 21st, 2018, Declining White Population is Spawning Fears Bias. Now, this article goes into that 2045 BS. You know, that is just their attempt to buy more time in being in charge. They don't want to let go. They want to, you know, stay in this position that they're not going to be able to hang on to, no matter how you look at it. Over the last three decades, demographers have told us that there would be come a day when the white population would begin to decline. It, it started declining in the 1950s, ladies and gentlemen. So when I read through some of these dates, and it's not the 1950s, just know they're not telling the truth about the date. Subsequently become less than half of the U.S. population, which they already are now. The first of these expectations is now here, about a decade earlier than projected. Mid-year population projections prepared by the U.S. Census Bureau indicate that there were nearly 32,000 fewer whites in the nation in 2017 than in 2016 a reduction of 0.02%. The white population decrease resulted from natural decline, which I believe that. So approximately 178,000 more deaths than birth. That's, a, you know, it's not the genocide that they're claiming. There is, I've been talking about this. I've been posting about this. And I'm glad that this person also came forward and made a video. I'm going to go and I'm going to show you the entire world, your population, what it looks like. She is definitely telling you the truth. This is the whole agenda behind the Trump administration. As she stated, a person like Donald Trump could never become president. But even the most holiest of the holiest voted for Donald Trump because the European population is dying. And they feel like Donald Trump can save them. I'm gonna let her continue her video. And then I'm gonna come and show you. No genocide, nobody is genociding these people. And if it's drug addiction, then they're genociding themselves. No one outside of these people are genociding them. It's a natural decline. Though 146,000 whites migrating from outside of the country, while addition in multiracial individuals who identify white as one of their races, creates white population gain. It is only an increase of 144,000, the smallest absolute change among single race and multiple race. Whites over the last decades, is really not that many biracial people to make up the difference for the white deaths. It, you know, don't even let that don't even think about that. It's not going to make that no difference as far as the deaths outweighing the birth. These patterns are consistent with the study that my colleague, Kenneth Johnson, from the University of New Hampshire, and I published recently. Our research shows that there are 26 states now that have more white deaths than births, including nine of the largest 15 in the country, California, Florida, Pennsylvania, Ohio, North Carolina, Michigan, New Jersey, Arizona, and Massachusetts. Now, New Jersey is not a big state, but it has a very dense population here. States where 
white deaths outnumber births have a higher share of their population being 65 and older. Remember, I told you that the white population is older and all of the other populations here are younger. And that's because their last biggest population are the baby boomers. And the baby boomers are now the elderly among them. And after this population goes, there are no generations that follow them that are large. And they are dying on a regular basis now because they're, they're, you know, they're the elderly. 65 and older, relatively low birth rates and a shrinking portion of women capable of giving birth. Put it simply, with an overall median age of 45, an aging white population produces more deaths than births. These trends suggest by, don't believe the 2045 date, ladies and gentlemen. I'm telling you, they are already in the minority. This is why you're seeing all of this erratic behavior from them. They're not acting like that because they're the majority, minority in 2045. They're acting the way that we see them act and becoming more violent is because they are there now. It, it, fear and violence is what they have used all throughout. They are acting more violent because they are already there now. As she said, this is no genocide. This is by natural selection. So they are already there now. So what do you think they're going to do about it? What do you think the wall is for? And what's next when they know that they're a shrinking population and they're dying? About history. All you got to do is go back to the chattel slavery days all the way up until now. When have they not used violence to stay in control? All right, <clears throat> moving away from that, because I know that stuff is fake and I'm not going to read it. The 21st century will increase seeing a growing Latino population and a declining white population. Latino population increased by 1.2 million between 2016 and 2017 accounting for nearly 53% of the overall national uh, growth during this period. As immigration from Mexico has plummeted over the last decade, Latino population growth is increasing, driven by natural increase, more births than deaths. Asso associated with is youthfulness, median age 29.8 whereas there are only 0 0.95 children for every one elderly person among whites. There are 4.4 children for one elderly person among Latinos, such as the relative presence of Latinos has increased. Only 0 0.95 children for every one elderly person among whites. There are 4.4 children for one elderly person among Latinos, such as the relative presence of Latinos has increased. Whereas there are only 0 0.95 children for every one elderly person among whites. There are 4.4 children for one elderly person among Latinos, such as. I'm going to show you that it's less than that. As the relative presence of Latinos has increased. In 1980, there were 12.3 whites for every one Latino in the U.S. Today, there are 3.4 whites 
to every one Latino, and the ratio is projected to drop to 1.6 by 2060. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say this again. They are already in the minority. They're going to say this again. They are already in the minority. This is why Trump is in the office of the presidency. They're already there. That's why somebody like him who's embarrassing the hell out of the country by upholding Russia and shitting on his own people. This is the demographic reality of America, a country where whites have enjoyed political, economical, social, and cultural, and demographic supremacy is changing fast. For many whites, this uncharted territory, many want their country back. Well, who took it from you? Only one that I see of America, a country where whites have enjoyed political, economical, social, and cultural, and demographic supremacy is changing fast. For many whites, this uncharted territory, many want their country back. Well, who took it from you? The only one that I've seen took this country from people are whites. You took it from the Aboriginal people that were already here. So other than that, I, I have never seen anybody take a thing. I don't even know why they keep using that terminology because it's stupid. The one that they knew before there were so many people of Mexican origin and other non-whites. Many whites view these individuals as threats to their way of life culture and the comfort and security of their white space that they long enjoy. It is this anxiety and fear that Donald Trump capitalized on as he initiated his pres presidential campaign. And that's true. We saw this during the election. It was like watching the meeting of the KKK when he had his rally. It's not going to do them any good, ladies and gentlemen. Donald Trump can't do nothing for them. He can't even do nothing for himself. Look at how he's fumbling all over the place over Russia meddling in the election. That man has not shut up. He has not stopped trying to obstruct justice. He has done everything he can. He looks like a complete buffoon. But moving on, let's make America great again. His proclamation uh, promising to take the country back to the 1940s when approximately nine of every 10 Americans were white. On the campaign trail, Trump promised white supporters that he would make America great again. Yeah, whatever. Keeping people of color out of the country and deporting those already here became a major priority with Mexicans and Muslims being particular, excuse me, targets. I've got the hiccups. Can you believe that? His uh, modius operandi has been travel bans against people from certain countries with large Muslim popul populations, um, massive detention and deportation of unauthorized immigrants, and now the willful and cruel separation of children from their parents fleeing violence in Central America. You know, this running around and antagonizing everybody is not going to do anything for their birth rate. But let's move on. These efforts are meant to stir the ire Remember, she just mentioned the birth rate. Hate and racism of his supporters against invaders and criminals who are coming to destroy our country. <laughs> Looks like history repeating itself. I'm sure when they came off of those ships from Europe, that's how many of the natives in this land felt. Trump also uses these endeavors to stem demographic shifts, making the country less white. Trump 
has other tricks up his sleeve to control the political strength of people of color. These have included the short-lived Presidential Advisory Commission on Election Integrity under the leadership of Chris Kobot, set on making it more difficult for people of color to vote. Well, they've always done that from the 60s all the way up until now. We're, we're used to that by now. And they include... The latest thing I wanted to add was citizenship. Now, according to the latest news, is that there is a question on the uh, census uh, viewer that uh, regarding uh, immigration, and I believe that it was where the category white is, that they're having them to identify which part of Europe they've come from, something they've never done because they realize that they're a minority. So they're going to try to take a protected class uh, status where we're a minority and where all of these uh, rules and regulations that were fought for by the African-Americans and other minorities, that they want those privileges of protection transferred to them when those protections were always ignored by them. They actually stole the 14th Amendment. They breached it in the Slaughterhouse case. Go read the excerpts. You don't have to read the case. You'll clearly get to the part where clearly that they used the uh, 14th Amendment in a case on, um, on monopolies about slaughterhouses where animals were being killed. And they used the 14th Amendment to steal it because they said that they were the citizens of the states. Anyway, that's a different story. Plans to revamp the drug wars to enhance the mass incarceration and by association and disenfranchisement of people of color. Well, why don't you stop doing that? That's the norm in America. I don't want to mean you want to enhance it. <laughs> Enhance it to what? You've already done? Get out of here. <laughs> Enhance it. You've been doing that from day one. Major cuts to fund for the preparation and execution of the coming census in 2020, which will be conducted mostly online, along with the inclusion of a question of citizenship, will undoubtedly increase the undercount of Latinos and other persons of color. Now Trump has selected a replacement to Justice Anthony Kennedy on the Supreme Court, which will tilt the courts. Uh, no, I'm, I forget about that. that that's not going to, nothing's going to change for us, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing's going to change for us, regardless of who they put on there, whether it's a conservative or liberal. It will not, life will not change for us. This video is much more recent than I thought. So I'm not even getting into that. Yet demographic strength does not necessarily translate to political power. Look at Texas, which has the second largest Latino population in the country, with whites holding a slim 730,000 population advantage over Latinos in the state. Latinos are on track to becoming the numerical majority in four years. Nonetheless, Texas continues to be one of the reddest states in the country, with Democrats last winning a statewide election in 1994. Despite its demographic, okay, okay, I'm moving down a little. Furthermore, Senator Spineless D. Republicans have perfected political strategies to stem the political representation and voting of Latinos and African Americans. These methods include gerrymandering. Nationwide, Texas was the clear winner in population growth between 2000 and 2010, with the state gaining four new U.S. congressional seats. 
Texas triumph was due to a growth of 3.8 million non-white persons along with a gain of 464,000 whites. But the new congressional seats were constructed to be white Republican congressional districts. Texas has also developed a voter ID law to make it more difficult for people of color to vote. Now, think about that, ladies and gentlemen. If they were not in the minority now, then why use all of these voter ID tactics on us? All right, again, don't listen to words. Words can be played around with, words can be imaginary, and so on and so forth. Watch the actions that a person does, and their actions are showing they're already in the minority. Playing around with votes, trying to push people out of here, putting Muslim bans in place, their actions are giving it away. Okay, let me just move down a little. Fortunately, the Supreme Court voted against Evan Well in April 2016, the demographic attributes of the Latino population along with the Republican political ploy work in conjunction to keep Texas red. The aging white population in the U.S. is experiencing population decline largely because white deaths are outnumbering births. The, the demographic reality has major implications for future for the future of the country. Latinos in particular will be an increasing important segment of the future of the country and all of its institutions, including the economy, the healthcare system, universities, the military, places of worship, and mass media. In his misguided vision to make America great again, Trump is taking the country to the past, a route that promotes hate and racism. No, let Trump take it there. Let Trump take it there because that is the thing that's going to unite the black population. So the more harsh they go on uh, everybody out in public, especially us, the more this is going to drive us together. So keep pouring it on Trump. In the path to make America truly great, we need to take into account the new demographic reality and look to a future that fosters hope and prosperity for all. That's fantasy talk. That's not going to happen. We haven't seen prosperity for all since this country has been in existence. We haven't seen it, and you're not going to see it now, ladies and gentlemen. We live in reality. We don't live in fantasy land here. So, ladies and gentlemen, look at it this way. These articles are coming out more and more, and although they are playing around with dates and stuff just to ensure they stay in power longer because they don't want to let go, it's going to have to happen no matter how you look at it, you know? And just expect them to keep acting crazy out in public, keep pulling guns out, keep shooting people, shooting each other in mass shootings and so on and so forth. All of this is going to continue to happen. They're going to step up pushing all these Latinos out of the country. They're going to be whining and complaining that they're victims. And all of this is going to be stepped up because of the climate that we're in. We're in the day and time of the crybaby. That's why we're seeing all these bogus 911 calls. Just understand this is the new era of the crybaby. And the crybaby is going to keep doing these things out here. And, and just like down in Florida, pulling guns and using stand your ground when it's not even an appropriate case for stand your ground. We're going to see all this. This place is going to go haywire. It's already haywire. And it's going to get worse. So as I said, 
you have a choice, black people, to keep mingling or to separate and come back to your community. And that's all I have to say. You know, it's going to have to come down to a time you're going to have to decide, do you want to continue to go out here and be hurt? Or do you want to come back and build within your community? you got to make that choice. Some of us have long been ready to shift. And some of our people simply don't want to let go. They fear <clears throat> so many things that they just hang on, although they know this whole thing is not right. Somewhere along the line, you've got to stop hanging on for dear life and let go and come back to your own people. It's the right thing to do, especially when you see you're not being treated right out in public. It's the only thing to do. Come home. Come out from her. From what does it say? Well, I'm going to put it like this we're not going to beg you, Negro Pains, to come home for anything because I feel that you would be enemies in the camp. Anyway, I'm going to put this video on hold and I will be right back. Okay, we just um, watched a video that stated an article that the white population, um, the declining white population was spawning fears. And so I put up the European population world o -meter. You can pull this up and you can look at also Africa and any part of the world that you would like and look at the population growth on what is going on in the population. Right now, that last three number says 398. It changed just before I turned the video on. We're still loading. It just now changed. This is a live meter, as you could see. It says it's live. It's happening now. And we saw that number change as I was talking. Um, I believe I've been on talking probably about a minute. So I'm going to wait until it changes again. Let me see if I can move this up and down now. Anyway, I'm going to continue to talk. It's still loading. It takes a while to load because they have some graphs down up into this uh, uh, article that are and where I'm going to be able to show you exactly what she was stating about they're already a minority. Not only are they a minority in the United States, they're a minority worldwide. She also mentioned that one of their claims spawned the claim of genocide and that it wasn't genocide, that it was by natural selection. She also gave us a number of 0.95% uh, uh, and I'm going to show you that. That number two was a little bit off um, because it's lower than that today where their population growths are. I'm going to have to hold this video for a moment. Okay, she had talked about, sorry about that, number one, my video went down and then I had to leave and run somewhere. But um, she had talked about the population of Europe. And so I have the Eurometer and I've already shown you the number when they, um, how many births they were having was probably one every minute or so. And as we could see, the population in Europe is growing, but it's not growing at a healthy number. And I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you the real reason for this for the fear that we saw. Now this was 
the number at the top of the day today 2018 and that is November 4th but what I'm about to show you is quite scary quite scary and we're going to look at the population the European population growth and what she was talking about and what the whole thing with Brexit and the European Union breaking up and them all being mad at each at each other and trying to play it off like it's a, something all about the European Union. Uh, well, the European Union um, went around the world and pretended that they were uh, not Europeans, that they were white people. Now, she's, she talked about 1950s, uh, the, the population growth, and this is between 1950 and 19, uh, 2018. As you can notice, this is a 1%. Uh, percent. That's, that represents 1%, but there is a curve going downwards right there. So what I'm going to talk about is this curve that goes down. And as we go through this graph, you will see it go, it's starting to decline. And we're going to get to a very important part in our, in our lifetimes uh, beyond the 1960s and the, 19, the 1980s and the 1990s into the period of around here. And I'm going to say 1996, 97. So this graph right here represents 0 0.0, 0 0.5, and 1, uh, 1 1.0. The European population is only at 1% 1, 1 or less. In order to maintain a, a, a healthy population, one must have a population growth of, uh, at minimum, 2.1. And, okay, so I'm going to go across this bar graph. And as we could see, uh, well, I can't see that way over there. It's that way down there. Oh, there we are. Okay. Uh, that in 1952, their, their uh, growth was at 0 0.998. And the the woman that spoke, she said that their that their population growth was at 0 0.9, 0 0.95. Well, I'm going to show you that this is a live meter. We saw that already, and I'm going to show you that that part right there was incorrect because in 1952 uh, it was at uh, that 0 0.95, and here it is uh, at one. 0 0.01 and as we go on and down here is that one percent and as we continue as I continue to go down this downward curve and I'm going to call this the survival bell curve you know they talk about their uh, intellectual acuity is higher than everyone else's and I'm showing you what their acuity to survive is. And, and uh, they failed miserably because, look, we're down. We're, we're going down on a downward slope here in the population growth. Remember, we talked that I pointed out birth rates right down there. They're at 0 0.4%. So it's, it's dropping significantly. As we get down farther, let me kind of lift my screen some, I think, here. Oh, my God. Okay. Nineteen ninety four. Uh, ninety. We are at one zero point one three percent. Remember, it's supposed to be zero. It's supposed to be two point one percent. This is zero point one three percent, 
that's a barely a fraction of what a normal population growth is. Now we're down into 1995, and this number is significant, 1995, we're at 0.08%. That is almost 20 years ago, specifically. Okay, let's go to 1996. We're at 0.02%. Do you guys looking at this line right here? This line is the 0.0, .0 line. You see the 0.0? .0? And you see this number is 0.0. .0 so they're just above this line at 0, 0.0. So we're going to look at the race, the competition. And 1997, look what happened. Do you see it? That they dropped off the 0, 0, 0.0 line here and it, went, it says minus 0, 0.03 that we're into the extinction line, that they dropped off the line into extinction and it goes right here in 1998. They were at zero, minus 0.0%. 0 .0%. Do you see that? Do you see why she was talking about the frenzy? That is, is natural selection. It's nothing that Trump can do about it because look, the universe did this. Remember she talked about how they went around and did all this stuff to everybody, okay? And then they lied like they were white and they hid their European origins and, and they didn't care about anything but greed. In 1999, we're at minus 0 0.0.1. With minus 0.05%. Do you see it? Is that below that line? Or have they dropped on the bell curve here? The, the acuity to survive the planet? Okay, let me continue because I only have so much more time. In the year 2000, they were at minus 0.02%. That's 18 years ago. They came above the extinction line in 2001 at 0.2%. Do you see how close we are to, we are just, we're on that extinction line right there. They dipped into extinction right here. This is what they didn't want you to know. This is what the whole thing of anger is all about right here. This circle right here, this is what spawns the fear. This right here. This is what the, she couldn't show you because she didn't have this worldometer. This worldometer. I have been studying this piece right here and I clearly understand what this uh, says. This clearly shows that something phenomena happened. In that period of time is that the European populations dip down into extinction. So here we go up here. It, they kind of climbed some and then they dipped again. Okay, then they dipped again. See that? 0.2%. Then we are here at, they are at 0.17%. They're dropping again, 0. Point, and that's 2011, 0.14%. And we get down here into 2018. Remember that 1995 number was at 0.08%. And then just some few years later in 96, they were at 0 0.02. And in 1995, Ninety, um, ninety, ninety-six. They dropped down to zero points, minus point zero point zero three, actually. 
So they're just above the extinction line. That's what all of this anger is about. This is what Donald Trump was hired. So I want to make that top number that I showed you significant. So hold on. I'll be right back. I'm going to go get another world, a world meter. Before I leave this screen here, I wanted to show that this is a current world domain world worldometer and it is the current population of Europe that is the number at the start of the day as of Sunday November 4th 2018 and it is based on the latest United Nations estimate that is the UN the European population is equivalent to 9.83% of the total world population. It says Europe populations. Europe ranked number three among regions in the world. So I needed to show you that because Europe likes to say that they're number one, but Europe ranks number three in regions of the world. So since she talked about the Mexican population, we're going to look at the population in Mexico and look at their live, the live um, world meter. And we're going to, you, look, you can see how much faster and rapid this number is growing. But when we look at the overall population in Mexico and the overall population in Europe, then we could say that the European population is larger in Europe. But in the, in the spread out amongst the world, and even in Europe, they're suffering a population decline. So spread amongst the world, it goes to show that their populations have declined. I'm just going to kind of jump through this because I've got one more to show you. So this is the Mexico worldometer. Um, I've already shown you what it looked like on the European one. And as we can see here, they also have had a significant drop in their population. And we get down to 2018, and their population growth is 1.24, which is much better than a zero minus 0 0.5 to uh, 0 0.08 percent, which is with the Europeans, they're way down here at 0 0.8 percent. Okay, so I will be right back. And I wanted to show you last the African population that it is booming. Look at it, how it's this is a live meter. I have been showing you, I've shown you three of them. So who are they going to come after next, you guys? Who is Donald Trump going to come after next? Because these uh, world population meters represent exactly how we have babies today. This is about the birth rate. This is about the population growth. And I showed you that they went into extinction from 1996 through the year 2000. Now, and if you don't open your eyes to what's going on now, uh, then you are being willfully blind. And that's all I have to say. Peace and love. And I just wanted to show you that because I have been talking about this and it's important to show it to you live. Thank you. Bye-bye. I will be uploading this um to teach in black historical facts, what America doesn't want you to know. I have been posting political um, articles lately uh, regarding uh, Donald Trump. I've also been telling you about white extinction, white genocide versus uh, European extinction. I've been telling you the scenario of a the construction of white people is a social construct, so it's not real. I've been posting an article by Philip Chan stating that white people don't exist. 
So if you continue to call these people white, knowing that they're Europeans, you are uplifting them and giving them power. You have, start, have got the census that she spoke about is the 2020 census, where they're going to have to identify their race by their ethnicities. 